Good morning, GB Kids. Hey, have you ever felt like you had something planned for the day and then it didn't go how you wanted it to go? Raise your hand if that's ever happened. Maybe you thought, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna play with these people or I'm gonna do this or do this or do that. And all of a sudden, mom or dad or somebody, or something happens where you cannot do it, all right? I've had those days. Um, where things just seem really out of control. Well, our Bible story today is talking about two followers of Jesus, Silas and Paul. Will you say that with me? Silas and Paul. Very good. So they were just wanting a normal day. They were getting up. They were going to go and pray. All right. So they were headed to the place where they were going to pray. That was all there was on their agenda. That's all they were doing. Just wanting to get up and go pray to God. Well, some things happened that were pretty out of control. Now, it got me thinking of something that I used to do when I was your age. I used to stand up, so I want you guys to stand up, wherever you are, to stand up. And you adults, if you're watching too, teenagers, get on up. And I want you, when I say go, to start spinning around in a circle, all right? As fast as you can, if you want. <laughs> and then when I say stop, I want you to stop and sit down wherever you are. Okay, ready? Go. I feel like you need music or something. Stop. Sit down. Now, are things kind of spinning? <laughs> I don't know if I gave you enough time or not, but I could tell you where I'm at, nothing's spinning. I didn't spin around. So I can assure you that even if you feel like you are out of control and the world or the room is spinning around you, I could tell you it's not. It's all under control. <laughs> Well, like I said, Paul and Silas, they thought they had control of their day and they actually were heading, like I said, to a place where they wanted to pray. So um, this comes from the book of Acts. We've been in the book of the Act, book of Acts for a few weeks now. Um, if you have your Bible, if you've got your adventure Bible, I want you to turn to Acts chapter 16. That's page 1220. Okay, 1220 is where we'll start. And it looks like this. This. Okay, it's got a thing about Lydia at the top in the uh, orange little box. Okay, one, two, two, zero. Go ahead and pause the video if you want to go find your Bible and get it to follow along. Uh, so Paul and Silas, like I said, they're going to go to the place where they were praying and they met a female. Uh, actually, she was a slave. Somebody had owned her and uh, they were actually making money off of her because uh, she was able to tell fortunes. So she would tell the future to all these people. And so she was doing that and her owners were getting all the money that they were making because of these fortunes. Well, she went around and in verse 16 it says, oh sorry, 17, she followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved. Well, guess what happens? The owners didn't like the fact that she was no longer able to tell fortunes, okay? So they got so mad that they started to beat Paul and Silas. They actually took wooden sticks and beat them. Well, that's not, that's not very good at all. So people hurt Paul and Silas with wooden sticks and Silas and Paul couldn't control the people beating them. So here's something they couldn't control at all, right? So what happened next? Things got a little worse. In uh, verse 23 and 24, it says this, after they had been severely beaten, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet to the stocks. All right. So all these two guys wanted to do was go to a place to pray. That's all they wanted to do. Then all of a sudden they encounter this woman and all of a sudden people start beating them. That's not good. And now they're in jail. That reminds me of like a title. Isn't there a book out there that says like the no good, very bad day or something like that? I think that the Paula and Silas are having a no good, very bad day, right? All they wanted to do was go and pray. And now they've been beaten and they've been thrown in jail. That's not good. All right. Not only that, it says that they were in the inner uh, cell 
and they actually had their feet shackled. So that means that there were feet or chains around their feet. What? All they wanted to do was go and pray. Now, all of this has happened. This is a no very good, very bad day or whatever that is, right? It's horrible. Well, in Acts 25, let's see what Paul and Silas did. While they were in prison, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. What? All right. You think about this. If you were Paul and Silas, who all you wanted to do was go and pray in the morning, you got up, you were headed, you were wanting to pray in this place that, that you wanted to gather, and then you got beaten, you got thrown in jail, and your feet are shackled, like chained up. And what do they do? They're singing and they're praising God. And all of the prisoners were listening. That is pretty awesome. Well, you think, okay, things are maybe calming down. Nope. Let's see what else happens that's out of control. Verse 26 says, Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison was shaken. An earthquake? Are you serious? So they're beaten, they're thrown in jail, they're in chains, and now an earthquake's come along. What? Let's see. Let's see what happens. All at once, the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We're here. We're all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked them, Sirs, how can I be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. So here's the deal. The jailer was put there to make sure that all the prisoners stayed in their cells and stayed there. So this earthquake happens. He's asleep. He wakes up. All the doors are open. He's like, oh my goodness, I did something horrible. They're all gone. Like, just it's not good right so he thinks about taking his own life which is horrible but Paul shouts out no 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 no! we're right here don't worry we're right here and this jailer was just so overcome with the fact that they all stayed they were free to go but they stayed and he was just so overwhelmed uh, that he actually went and said how do I be how am I to be saved and they said, believe in the Lord Jesus. So what's really awesome is then all the prisoners become free. And I'll read you the rest of it. It says, they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Verse 32. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in the house, in his house. At the hour of the night of the day, at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. So he went ahead and he took and washed their wounds uh, from being beaten and just shackled and all of that. Then immediately he and all of his household was baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because, because he had come to believe in God and his and his whole household uh, became believers in Jesus. So here's this no good, very bad day that Silas and Paul were having, where again, they wanted to go, they wanted to just pray together and pray to God and encounter this woman. Then they're beaten, then they're thrown in jail. And not only thrown in jail, there's chains all around their feet so they can't leave. An earthquake happens. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they're able to tell the gospel what we what we say is telling the gospel telling people about jesus to this jailer and the jailer then believes in god not only him but his whole household gets baptized and believes in god now i can tell you as an adult there are times i mean 
thankfully, we don't ever have to really worry about us all having this very bad day because this is not typical. This is not a good day. For us, are not good days we could look at and go, man, I really wanted to go play with my friend and I can't because something happened, they're sick or change of plans and we get bummed about it, right? That's kind of the worst thing that really happens for us for our change of, change of plans. But um, we know that God is always in control. And God is in control of this situation for Paul and Silas because uh, even though all of those bad things happened, God allowed this earthquake to happen so that then uh, the jailer could come to know him and his whole household be baptized and uh, to start living a life um, and following Jesus, which is amazing and wonderful. And so we've been talking just the last couple weeks about the fact that baptism is coming up on August 9th. And if you yourself are interested in being baptized uh, to show the world that you uh, want to follow God and that you love Jesus, uh, I encourage you, again, talk with your adult in your house. Um, and they can talk with me or Pastor Terry or Tom and see about getting you baptized. Um, all right? Because it's a wonderful thing to do. Um, like I said, when things seem out of control and we have those not so good, very bad days or whatever that, that uh, book is, um, when we have those days, what we can rest in knowing is that Jesus is there. God is in control. God is in control no matter what. All right. So when we feel like things are just not going our way, things are happening that just seem overwhelming and our world is spinning like we spun around the beginning of this lesson, when the world seems to be spinning out of control, we can take a rest and know that God, God has us. God has us. We're in control because God is in control. God's in control. He's got us. All right, so let's pray. Father God, I thank you for the reminder that you are in control. No matter if we are having a not so good, very bad day, whatever that was, that you are in control. And just ask that you would help us this week to realize that when things don't go the way we want them to go, that you have us. You are in control. And we rest in that. We love you and pray all these things in Jesus' name. Everybody said... Amen. <laughs> Have a good week, you guys. God loves you. So do I. And we'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Right,